Good morning. I am V. S. Hegde from SDM College of Engineering and Technology, Darwad. As part of VTU e-learning resources, I wish to discuss on earth resources engineering. We society as a whole or engineering graduates in particular directly or indirectly deal with earth resources. Naturally available earth resources often not suitable for direct use. We engineer those resources. How exactly we are going to engineer those resources? What are all the earth resources? How best we can deliver services to the society? It should be sustainable, economically viable, eco-friendly. That is our objective. In this regard, we need to know what is earth, what are the earth resources, how these resources are delicate, what is their unique nature, etc. We need to understand. Now, let us begin with the earth. It is a branch of science dealing with earth resources like minerals, rocks, water, energy, resources and minerals, coal, petroleum, earth process like earthquakes, volcanoes that affect the society, life and properties of man and man-made structure. All this we are going to study as part of this. The study of the earth comprises earth as a whole, its a structure, its a composition, history, origin and nature of the process. The main branches of earth resources engineering and that concerns society and engineers directly are physical geology, crystallography, mineralogy, petrology, structural geology, resources engineering, photogeology, economic geology, mining geology, engineering geology, hydrogeology, etc. These are directly our concern. There are many other branches which scientists at a higher level may be concerned. We civil engineers and society directly we are concerned with this. Let us see what it is further. Now, physical geology, it deals with the earth surface process and resulting landforms. Knowledge of these enable the society and engineers in selection of suitable site for a different type of project to be undertaken, such as roads, mountain, terrains, tunnels, across, across mountainous or hilly area, dam across rivers, the construction materials and their response to surface process, etc. Physical agents which go on modifying the earth surfaces of the earth physically, chemically and mechanically and challenges posed by these protecting the man-made structure. Physical geology not just confined to this, even the landforms are also our resources. How exactly we deal with our landforms is very important. For example, in the physiography of India, we know this is the western ghat. The rain bearing clouds hit the western ghats, the clouds rise up and get arrested by the forest cover, etc. They cause a regular rainfall. The rainfall here is so important a resource for us and these rivers flow across these mountains useful for harnessing the water resources construction of dam, generation of electricity, etc. On the other hand, rivers flowing across these flow over plateau region. We can construct a dam, harness for vast area for irrigation. See how physiography controls man-made activities engineering. 
another this is a aravalli mountain ranges they are oriented parallel to the direction of rain bearing clouds that itself is also another resource because these clouds hits the west the himalaya cause plenty of rainfall therefore the himalayan rivers flow full throughout the year snow melting as well as high rainfall we have seen the falgat gap the rain bearing clouds directly passes and cause precipitation interior now you understand how beautifully the physiography of india controls the resources available recycling of the resources and controls the activities here we have a desert here that is another important gets heated up during april march and low pressure the rises air mass rises up attract the cloud air mass attract this air mass move there again here this attract the clouds thus atmospheric circulation regular rainfall is also controlled by the land form therefore it is not just the activities that we undertake depends on the land form the land forms also determine the resources availability accordingly our activities also vary therefore these are all very important now mineralogy is another branch of geology here it deals with the study of minerals what do we mean by mineral mineral may be defined as a naturally occurring homogeneous solid inorganically formed having definite chemical composition and definite atomic arrangement in what way it is different from the rocks we get what is the difference between a rocks and a mineral it has definite atomic arrangement and homogeneous whereas the rocks may not be homogeneous this homogeneity is responsible for its application of specific physical properties chemical properties etc and that we can make use in engineering therefore knowledge of minerals mineralogy helps the engineer better to decide upon example mineral mineralogy study of minerals not only useful to identify the rocks because rocks are ultimately composed of several minerals based on the presence or absence of minerals plus based on the abundance of that particular mineral the rock property is governed rock type varies based on the composition of the mineral and their properties raw materials to industry such as cement iron and steel fertile glass industry and so on these are governed by composition and properties of the material or mineral that decides its application in suitable industry minerals are important in production of atomic energy uranite uranium minerals they serve as a source of energy ore minerals iron ore chromatite bauxite manganese ore these are all from the minerals and minerals are important raw materials for many of our major industries and that sustain the economic activity and so on employment etc all this come from the mineral but what type of mineral help us for what type of industry if i have to know i must have the knowledge of minerals their properties etc their properties determine extraction of the metal even in the metallurgy therefore knowledge of mineralogy help engineers and society a lot 
there are some minerals whose presence can create problems in the site. Example, there are steep cutting area minerals like clay minerals, serpentine minerals, talc, etc., which have slippery nature may induce trigger the landslides. Therefore, I must know what is the type of mineral. For example, Mount Morillonite is a kind of mineral which has large swelling capacity. They absorb water, swell a lot and therefore swelling pressure exerts on the structure, structure gets affected. In the dry season, in the absence of water, these minerals shrink, shrinkage cracks develop. Crack is nothing but a weakness. Therefore, they determine our structures, foundation or weakness, etc. Therefore, there are certain minerals like arsenic content minerals, real gar, or pigment, etc. If water come in contact with this mineral, water get contaminated. Arsenic compound that is harmful, we say water is polluted, not suitable for drinking. Therefore, we engineers and people at large come in contact with one or the other mineral in day to day life. If we have the primary knowledge of these minerals, we will take better precaution, better use of this mineral. Yes. Then we move to petrology. Petro means it is a Greek word, rock study. This subject deals with the study of rocks. What is a rock? Just now I have defined. It is aggregate of minerals, made up of several minerals. It is found in the earth's crust, uppermost layer. We discuss the crust a little later. Knowledge of the study of rocks enables civil engineers in a selection of suitable rocks for building stool, for a road aggregate, railway ballast, decorative and dimensional stones, rocks suitable for smooth carving. Like we have in Shravana Balagula, Gamteshwara, we have selected one type of rock. In Belur Halabed, we have selected another type of rock. In uh, various places like Hampi, we have selected a granite. Depending on the climate, the property of the rock, we can select. This selection dependent on what is that rock, how it is, what are its composition, etc. The knowledge of rock help us these activities. So, in architecture purpose, a beautiful attractive rock is important. What is the response of the rock for different climate condition? Just now I said example, Shravana Balagula Gomteshwar, several hundred years it is in open air, but it has not been affected by atmosphere. Its a color, its a look, carving, everything entirely not affected, still retained. On the other hand, we have Belur and that is a soft stone. It is not in open air. It is inside. It is covered from heat and water, rain, etc. Therefore, where the particular structure is to be placed depends on the climate. In response to this, I have to select a rock. So, there are certain rocks which are very sensitive for weathering. Some rocks are sense resistant. Behavior of, of rocks under pressure, I have to construct a dam. If the rock found in the site for foundation, etc., it is weak, not able to withstand the pressure, structure may not be stable. Therefore, under pressure, how it can behave? Heat. We are talking about the green building nowadays. So, heat proof structure is very important. And there are certain rocks which contain metals in them. 
metallic content is a good conductor of heat we know the structure gets interior become warmer that is not good so in the presence of water there are certain rocks which are porous they can contain they absorb water again leakage dampness in the building etc so depending on the climate i should able to select a suitable rock that kind of knowledge i get from the study of rocks i have to use the rocks in aggregate which aggregate has a better cementing value which rock do not have better cementing value which rock can sustain pressure with stand the pressure so i have to decide therefore depending on special use for example for uranium reactor we have seen the wall that where we use high density material for concrete normal aggregate what we use for the road or for building is not suitable therefore knowledge of petrology or rock study help civil engineers in many way yes structural geology it deals with the study of a structure found in the rocks knowledge of structure present in a rocks enable the civil engineers in the selection of suitable site for all types of project such as dam tunnel or multi story building etc behavior of rocks due to the structure present in the rocks precaution to be adopted in the structure the structure we are going to construct etc we benefited by the knowledge of the structure we study that aspect under this branch of science example a rock is perfectly flat and a structure rest on that the load acts perpendicular to the structure it can withstand if the rocks are bent or inclined the load is not perpendicular to the structure it may not take that amount of load therefore this become the weak when we bend the rocks we call fold different part of the material part of that body the internal particles we call grain or mineral or particle behave differently depending on which part of the structure they are example if i have a structure like this and this is a rock like this here we find compressive force obviously particles get compressed here we have tensional force and this become because of pulling apart weak in this part see because of this force they are under shear stress like this therefore behavior of particles constituting the rock behave differently whether i am going to construct my structure dam like this if this is the river or if i am constructing my structure here or here now the design of all these are determined by the kind of structure i have therefore the knowledge of structural geology is very important especially for civil engineers resources engineers those who are looking for metals mineral deposits those who are looking for petroleum deposits ground water storage etc these are all largely dependent on in the road project we have seen many road side there is a collapse this collapse or slide is also determined by the presence or absence of particular structure therefore we study these all aspects under structural geology a rock perfectly plain plate etc horizontal 
particles if individual particles not affected to any external force behavior is something different the same rock if subjected to fold it is a different the same thing if under pressure water pressure under a dam their behavior differs again therefore all this is important in addressing the sustainability and safety of man made structures whether it is a multi storied building or a dam tunnel etc so that is important now we shall go to crystallography what do you mean by crystallography it is a branch of earth science Okay. Okay. Earth science. It deals with the study of nature of crystals. What is a crystal? It is a regular polyhedral form, definite geometrical shape. It has. It is bounded by smooth surface. Knowledge of crystals' nature enables to identify the minerals. There are certain minerals. which have nearly similar physical properties based on physical properties i am not able to distinguish whether this one or this one example pyrite it is called fool's gold gold we know and pyrite also has yellow color metallic luster high density gold also has high density yellow color metallic shining it is difficult to distinguish we dependent on some physical properties okay to certain extent physical properties permit us to identify them but beyond we will not be able to identify so example mount morelonite is a kind of mineral which has a large swelling capacity it is a dark in color forest soil organic rich is also dark in color and by physical properties i am not able to totally distinguish therefore it's also important to distinguish them therefore i can identify what exactly i can also find suitable application based on their properties like a quartz we know quartz watch we say calcite nickel's prism in microscope these are all dependent on the specific properties of the mineral and these properties are governed by their crystal habit the light that passes through diamond gets several times total internal reflection it brilliantly shines but there are some other minerals which have the similar nature but not similarly there are some minerals like quartz some crystal quartz may appear like diamond for some people but it is not total internal reflection or its other properties with respect to light etc cannot be determined by other physical properties we need to study them so important another branch of geology is economic geology it's a branch of geology it deals with study of economic minerals like ore minerals just now i mentioned hematite magnetite or iron ore minerals chromite is a chromium ore bauxite ore of aluminum similarly we have pyrolusite manganese ore silomelin manganese ore there are so many minerals which are important in many of our industries and where they occur how do they occur what is their properties where etc are all important example the petroleum is found in rock where exactly do we have petroleum in everywhere in karnataka no in karnataka the geology of the 
rocks is different. It is only found in certain type of rock. Similarly, coal is found in only certain type of rock. Gold is found in certain type of rock. Their localization is important. Everywhere we cannot mine, their concentration also should be high. Every rock contains iron, maybe 2 percent, maybe 60 percent like. But those which are economically viable, where they get economically viable concentration level, that is their concentration, where, etc. And how, etc. All this determines our mining activities and their knowledge is very important. So, the composition is also important because that determines their extraction method. Example, Indian coal contains a high amount of sulphur. If we use Indian coal in many projects, there is a pollution. Whereas, say German coal do not contain or an lead. When we burn a kg of lead, uh, coal in the coal, concentration of lead may be only 10 ppm. When I burn, it is reduced to say 110 and the concentration of lead increases by 10 percent. Means one, the kg coal I burn in 1 gram, 100 ppm may be the lead, it is so high level. Therefore, the very composition of the ore mineral is important that it decides many of our activities. Yes, mining jewel. It is directly connected with the economic geology, but a lot of engineering is involved. As a branch of geology deals with the study of application of geological principles, we want to take out the mineral. I have to make use of principles of geology. What are those? We shall study. Then the tools in mining. I have to economically mine. What are the tools I can use? Where I have to put a drill? Where I have to take out the oil, etc. And it should be safely, it should be economically and sustainable. Because I put a well for petroleum or water, after 5 years or 10 years, a well do not suck water at all. It is not sustainable. I have invented so much. It should be sustainable. At the same time, safely, we have heard lot of oil extraction in Gujarat because of subsidence of the underground earthquake happened. We read. It is debatable. Similarly, Dhanabad city sinking because of a large amount of coal extraction because of the load of the overlying material, there is subsidence, sinking, etc. Our mining should be safe. Then it should be economical also. In Kolar, gold is found today at 2 kilometer, more than 2 kilometer, it is no more attractive, people say. Therefore, how to make it attractive means economically, it's all concerns of mining geology. We may have to adopt example. In China, even 45 percent of the iron ore they use in India, less than 60 percent, we do not use them. It is because of the kind of technology they are adopting. So, mining geology, right from mining, extraction of the metal from the ground till we process it, example, from Goa, we get an iron ore. It is a dusty. We cannot take it to a long distance because it pollutes the air. We have to pelletize it. So, all those now related to the kind of mining activity from there to pellet, transport, everything comes under. We have heard mine subsidence. So many people have died in a coal mine. They are trapped, a groundwater rush, etc. So, under such condition, what is our strategy and what kind of engineering activity is needed that we need under mining geology? Even I have to get the ore from depth. 
it may be the sheared fractured powder or it may be hard rock so how to take it out it's part of mining geology hydrogeology it's a branch of geology it deals with studies both quality and quantity of water that are present in the rocks in different condition different states we are all concerned with we do not get water everywhere people say yield is good yield is poor here we get water at shallow depth here we get at a deeper depth etc in which rock this water is found are they suitable for drinking some water are not suitable for drinking and some water are hard and why they are hard water during percolation interact with the soil layer whatever the water we get in the soil is not the ground water it is not possible to take out below that there are rocks and they percolate down at certain depth they get accumulated which type of rock what is the condition suitable for their accumulation whether the water that percolated have they interacted with the rocks where their chemistry got changed contaminated not contaminated etc and ultimately what is the present quality all this how to locate how to take it how to make it sustainable nowadays we are talking about recharging of a ground water artificial recharge where we can recharge can we recharge it everywhere not possible so there should be a suitable topography there should be rainfall there should be an the suitable rock through which water can percolate can get stored if water do not get stored underground what happens if water percolate several kilometer it is lost from our hand therefore we want that water to be available for us it should be get stored at certain depth not very deep not very shallow if it get stored at very shallow depth we have water logging problem later so it has to be percolate has to be get stored at certain depth where i need to understand this i can study and understand if i have the knowledge of hydrogeology in detail yes engineering geology it's a branch of geology deals with all the geological problems that arise in the field field of civil engineering along with a suitable treatment in general it is application of all those branches which we have said earlier to serve the society i may have quoted only the engineering problems that a dam construction civil etc it is not limited to that general earlier engineering geology or in common man mind engineering geology means he is connected with a dam or such a tunnel project not so we have environmental geology everywhere geology it provides information in most important area resources for construction where do i get material for our activities aggregates or facing foundation rock soil etc <coughs> for good aggregate i may have two types of aggregate example i quote in belagaon we have a kind of rock bangalore mysore we may have a kind of rock whether the rocks we get from belagaon and granite that we get from say uh, mysore or bangalore are they equal in one way the belagaon aggregate we call a grade aggregate because its cementing value is higher on the other end in bangalore we get plenty cheap it is equally hard but its cementing value is a little low on the other end 
between Darwad, Haveri, Rani, it's a weak kind, we get another kind of rock, which is intermediate in between. So what is my choice? Now, all depends on the structure we construct, the properties I expect, the rocks there we have. All this I study under this branch. I have to waste, uh, dispose the waste where I can fill. I have to find a suitable foundation where I can go for a dam. Example, if I have a wide river, wide river valley, the length of the construction of the dam is so high. If I have a narrow valley, length of the construction is very less. So what type of dam I go? What type of dam I construct? So the site is very important. I have to have a hill road in a hilly area. I have a mountainous terrain. Then the tunnel may become more cheaper than the surface activities. Because beyond depth, beyond certain depth, open cutting is not economical. I can prefer the tunnels. That is more important. Now all these activities are facilitated by the knowledge of engineering geology, that is what are the rocks, what are the structure, etc. Now mitigation of geological hazards, where frequently landslides can occur, where earthquakes can occur and how I have to manage those how I can take precaution, safeguard the society and their properties, etc. So I have to evaluate the cost of, then provide information to the public. All those is possible if I have the knowledge of this. It provides information about the site of construction, construction material where it is available, what kind of material I have to use for the given building, for the dam, for the tunnel, where I can, the tanks or the reservoir or highway, bridges, all this invariably requires the knowledge of the site and I have to decide upon. Geological information is not necessarily about the rocks, about the climate, about the structure, what is below underground, everything. So, it is also important in a planning phase. Just now I have discussed what type of a dam I have to construct, I have to plan. Once I know a wide valley I have, I have to construct this type of dam, then I prefer earthen dam. If I have a narrow valley, I prefer a gravity dam. Obviously, the design of earthen dam, design of a a gravity dam is a different that design stage I must decide. And then the construction phase, entire long dam example, we have Kadra, 1.4 kilometer long. Can I construct entire 1.4 kilometer by concrete structure? It is economically not possible. On the other hand, we have super dam example or caretaker. We have the length of the dam. If less, I can go for concrete gravity structure. It become economical. So I have to decide upon the design and construction phase. How exactly? Example, super dam is a typical example the foundation was so weak on the sides these are higher highly weathered rocks it is a high rainfall area during construction if construction activity exceeds more than six months seven months eight months one year like during heavy rain these are all highly foliated weathered rocks they swell and the slide the structure collapses if at all, I have to complete the activity within six months before these rocks get exposed. 
and then I have to grout them, seal them so they do not absorb water further. Again a foundation also, we have a problem, highly fractured, fractured, fractured rock up to certain depth. Beyond certain depth we have massive rock. We are happy now. But if you try again, we are weathered, weathered, weathered rocks, fractured. Alternate weathered, fresh, weathered, fresh, weathered, fresh. What kind of foundation I have to have? Because weathered rock means weak foundation, weak rock. Their load sustainability or load bearing capacity is very low. I have to remove, I get fresh rock. But this fresh rock is resting on again weathered rock or jointed rock. So what kind of precaution I have to take? Again, in a river valley project, erosion is another. Lot of erosion, sediments are delivered into example, Tungbhadra reservoir. Because of surrounding mining activities, people say nearly 40% of the reservoir capacity is lost. It is because of erosion. What kind of erosion? And what will happen to this eroded material? They are all lying in the ground, low-lying area, the agriculture field. Iron is deposited, fertile land once upon a time, now become very bad land. This erosion of material from the mountainous terrain material get deposited in the valley, valley, flow, valley field flows out, floods is one, they get deposited in the reservoir, their capacity is lost is another problem and they may flow and spread in the low-lying agriculture field, damage the fertility of the land is another type. Loss of fertile soil from the ground is another. How much quantity of erosion? Where they get deposited? Where do they, what is the kind of erosion, can I control? Physical erosion, materials are transported in the form of a sand or silt, I can arrest. If it is dissolved, chemically uh, they are eroded, do I have control? What kind of mechanism I have to adopt? What way they are transported, can I arrest them? Then where they get deposited, that is another important, whether in the river valley, example, there are certain materials get deposited in the river mouth. They block the river mouth and therefore river mouth no more, no suitable for navigation purpose. That is another disadvantage, if it gets deposited in the reservoir. I have to periodically desilt them. If it is deposited in the river bed, it is good, sand mining. Those which get deposited in the river bed serve as a source of sand for our construction. So where they get deposited is also equally important. So it also helps in how best we can conserve our soil. How best I can control our river, we call river engineering, river valley projects. How best we can preserve, if certain amount of sand is not delivered into the coast, the sea waves now erode elsewhere and get their material. If river supplies the sand, the waves are happy with the sand. If river do not supply the sand, the waves start eroding the coast. We have a coastal erosion and harbor, if they may get deposited in that, we have siltation. These are all the problems. We have to deal with this and I have to so engineering geology is ideal. Friends, now we have studied the in branches of geology in brief and now we shall go little deeper. Internal structure and composition of the earth. Earth is very sensitive. It responds both to internal forces as well as external force. Example, 
attraction of the moon sun or the when sun moon earth come in a line higher tides are generated we read means earth responds to external force it also responds to internal force there are certain process that are taking place inside the earth in response to this there may be earthquake there may be volcano there may be landslides there may be subsidence these are all due to internal unfortunately friends i do not have we do not have any control on the external forces i cannot determine when or sun moon and earth should not come in a line or when they have to come in i do not have control but i can take precaution about those forces and damage that get affected due to internal forces how exactly where exactly this process operate what is their nature and magnitude it all depends on the internal structure and composition because this determines earth's internal dynamics internally earth is a dynamic we said that earthquake volcanoes their magnitude frequency of occurrence so their local location of occurrence etc are all governed by earth's internal structure and composition a civil engineer especially is concerned with design of many many mega projects burj structure we have heard so and uh, so many hundred and multi story buildings we have heard huge dam this is kr sagar dam is like an example and in designing such a dam we need to consider the safety and whatever possible etc therefore all these are governed by internal forces i have to select a suitable location i have to take precaution all these are governed by internal structure and composition so we shall try to understand what exactly internal structure and composition now earth's internal structure is very unique and why it is so unique what made it that unique and how it is going to affect our activities is important let us go little deeper into we gain some insight about the structure and composition early differentiation of earth into mantle core and then crust is the topmost then mantle and core as we know there is a sun made up of several materials with rotation that materials are thrown out there is another star close pass very close to the sun and pull the atmosphere of the sun that gradually cooled condensed from the earth we know once the earth formed because of the differentiation heavy materials went into inside moderately denser materials very lighter materials outside we call the crust outermost then we call the mantle interior still deeper we call the core we'll study that little later now do we know really it is made up of so dense dense material or what is the nature of this mantle how do we know no to understand this we try to apply some knowledge of physics and chemistry friends we will discuss this and continue till then you have little homework about thinking how exactly these may help us thank you we shall continue